tutorial video. This is a second example of the allocation problem. It's recommended you look at the allocation problem example one where we took more time explaining each step. But let's now look at a second example. In this example we've got four people, people A, B, C and D, with four tasks one, two, three and four. And each person has the time, unit of time, could be days, weeks, years, minutes, that requires uh, for them to complete each task. So person A takes four units of time to complete task one, nine units for task two, eight units for task three, and 13 units for task four. What we want to do is allocate each person one task each to work out the minimum time. So we commence that with a row reduction. So for each of the rows, we identify the smallest number. So in this first row, number four is the smallest. Second row, number five is the smallest. Third row, three is the smallest. And fourth row, six is the smallest. Even though it occurs twice, it's the smallest number in each row. We then subtract that number from the rest of the numbers in that row. So for everything in row one, we take a four, because that's the smallest number. Every element in the second row, we take a five. Every element in the third row, we take a three. And every element in the fourth row, we take a six. OK, we now look at the allocation. We want to find out what's the minimum number of lines that I have there in blue, either vertical or horizontal, that we can use to cover all the zeros on that particular table. So I could choose to draw a line in this column and a line in this row, one vertical, one horizontal, and that will cover all the zeros. And I've done that with only using two lines, the minimum of two lines. So this is not an optimum allocation. An optimal allocation is where you need as many lines as there are tasks. That is four lines to cover your four tasks with the zeros. So here I've covered all my zeros with only two lines. That is not a an optical uh, sorry an optimal allocation rather. So let's proceed to our column reduction. So the numbers we have here, we now want to perform a column reduction. So in the column we identify the smallest number. So in this first column, 0 is the smallest number. In the second column, 2 is the smallest. In the third column, 0 is the smallest. And in the fourth column, 9 is the smallest. We then subtract those numbers from every other element in that particular column. So 0 is subtracted from everything in column 1. 2 is subtracted from everything in column 2. 0 again from everything in column 3. And 9 is from everything in column 4. That further reduces the numbers on our table. So that's our column reduction completed. We now again perform an allocation, or attempt an allocation. We can see we can use one, two verticals, and one horizontal, which gives us three lines to cover all the zeros. Is this an optimal allocation? No, it's not, because we're using fewer lines than there are tasks. If this were an optimal allocation, we would need four lines, but we can do it in three. So we need to continue. We've done a row reduction, a column reduction, check the allocation after each, we now go to the third step, which is the Hungarian algorithm. For the Hungarian algorithm, we identify the smallest uncovered number, which is 3. We subtract 3 from every uncovered number or elements in this table as such. We then add that number to wherever there is a covered intersection. So this one here, um, at the intersection of person D and task 1, there's the intersection of the two lines, so we add that, un, that minimum number, which is a 3 here, and here's the second intersection between task 4, the line, and person D, the line. They intersect here, so 0, we add that minimum number of 3 again. That's the Hungarian algorithm completed. We once again look for the allocation. We attempt an allocation. So in this scenario, it takes 1, 2, 3, 4 lines to cover all the zeros. We've used a minimum of 4 lines to cover the zeros, and there are four jobs. So this is an optimal allocation because the minimum lines used is equal to the number of jobs. Next step is to perform a, bi a bipartite graph to generate. So this links or shows all the people and all the tasks. Remembering we can only allocate one person to a particular task. So if we look here back at our original um, table, once we perform our Hungarian algorithm, Person B could only perform task 1. The 0 represents the task they can perform. So person B can only perform task 1. So we allocate person B task 1. So they're the only one that can perform it. And they have to have a single task. Let's now look at person C. They can perform task 1 because they have a 0 in it. And task 4 as they have a 0 in it. So person C can perform both task 1 and 4. However, we've already allocated task 1 to person B. And that leaves person C to, to complete task 4. 
Next we look at person A. They can do task 1, 2 and 4. So person A can complete task 1, 2 and 4. However, task 1 has already been allocated to B and task 4 has only already been allocated to C. That leaves only task A, sorry, task 2 available for person A to complete as a unique task. And finally that leaves us clearly with the person D to complete task 3. But let's go through the steps again. Person D can complete task 2 or 3 based on the zeros. So person D can do task 2 and 3. Again, task 2 has already been allocated to person A, so that leaves person D with only task 3 to complete. So now we've allocated each person with a particular job. Person A can do task 2, B can do task 1, C can do task 4, and D can do task 3. We look back at our original allocation from the very, very first table, and we can see the times allocated for each particular job. Here we go back, we said A does task 2. So A to do task 2 would take 9 units of time. Okay. Um, B can do task 1. So B doing task 1 would take 5. C can do task 4. C doing task 4 would take 12 units of time. And D can do task 3. D doing task 3 would be 6 units of time. So we allocate the jobs and we add those times up and it says the minimum time for this particular allocation is 32 units, be they minutes, days, weeks, years. I hope this has helped again with the allocation problem. Recapping, we've completed a row reduction and then we've attempted an, al a, an allocation. We've then completed a column reduction, attempted another allocation. Both of those allocations have been unsuccessful, so we've gone further to a Hungarian algorithm. At the end of the Hungarian algorithm, we have performed an optimal allocation. We've then gone to our bipartite graph and allocated each person a single job, and from that, we've calculated the minimum time for all people to complete their tasks. Once again, I hope this has been a useful video, and thank you for viewing.